The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, looking good, Billy Ray. Feeling good, Lewis. We start today like we usually do, looking at the German DAX. And as you can see, it's been in a nice little uptrend, completing an ABCD as we speak. If you like ABCDs, and the next chart we want to show you is a really good example of a roaring rally in a tremendously bullish market like the German Bund. Folks, take a look at this. It's been going sideways here for four days, just barely making the 382 retracement. I don't know if you would define that as a dead cat bounce, but it would be pretty close. Now, today we're going to have Stan Harley as our guest at the half hour break. And then next week, there's going to be something really special. I'm going to shake the tree a little bit. And on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, I'm going to have John Jameson on. He's going to be talking about data dependency and how he uses Fibonacci with volume. You're going to, it'll blow your socks off, so don't miss those three days. And then on Thursday, Thursday is the day you open all your presents because we have Norman, who calls it to the minute, Winsky, will be our guest. Remember, folks, that Monday is the autumn equinox. Those of you that ever get down to Mexico, down to Chichen Itza, down where the pyramids are, just south of Cozumel, and you will be able to see a pyramid that when the sun hits it exactly at the top of the uh, at noon on that day, as the sun hits the pyramid, it starts forming 45-degree angles down the side of the pyramid that looks like a snake going out into the jungle. There'll only be about four or 500,000 people there that day, so make sure you get your reservation. It's easier to go on the Internet and pull it out and take a look at it. It'd be much easier to do that. Hey, we got Mr. Z on the lines. Wow. How did you get through, Mr. Z? The lines were full. What's up, my friend? I... Uh... I slipped Al, the producer, big one. Uh, you had to, because he's a toughie to work through. What can I do for you, buddy? You want to talk about corn, I think, right? I uh, I do. I've been waiting uh, to mention this in uh, uh, on a TFNN show until you returned. Mm -hmm. And your return here from uh, the U.K. is timely, being the uh, end of September. Mm -hmm. On account of the fact that there is the potential that the corn market here in 2019 is performing very similarly to the way the corn market price-wise behaved back in 1993. Mm -hmm. I see you posted and, uh, that chart. For the benefit of people in the Tiger's Den, I posted that monthly chart showing the action back in 93. So let me just uh, uh, tell you the background that leads me to this conclusion. And um, it's worth noting that here in 2019, we had um, excessively wet weather that extended into June, disrupting planting. And we all know that, of course, we lived it. Um, that was preceded here in the U.S. with very wet conditions throughout the Corn Belt, beginning way back last October. So from October through Early May, it was wetter than average, quite a bit wetter than average throughout the Corn Belt. And uh, that then started impinging upon corn planting. And, of course, that wetness continued and extended in through, say, June 15th, June 20th, uh, which delayed the planting big time. And we all recall what happened to price back from May 15th to July, uh, July 1st. Well, anyway... This occurrence here in 2018-19, weather-wise, was near identical to what happened in 92-93. Uh, 92 was wet in the fall, wet in the winter, wet in the spring. And then in uh, was mid-June to mid-July, uh, weather patterns set up that just left a deluge, which just flooded the Missouri and the Mississippi catastrophically. 
But when one looks at the price action of corn back in 93, there was certainly a rally in June and July. But it wasn't all that big. It was like 15%. And I guess the, well, you know, I was trading corn back at that time, so I do remember what, what the thought was. And the thought was, well, hey, uh, some, some corn fields along the Mississippi and Missouri rivers got flooded out, that's for sure. But, you know, hell, uh, rain makes grain is the saying. And those areas that weren't in low-lying areas would have uh, been well watered and given you a good crop. So price rose, but not dramatically until, and this is a key point, until September and through December. And what happened in 93, there was an intra-month low in September. Right after Labor Day, there was a, uh, a low lower than all of August. And frankly, that's exactly what's happened thus far this year. A low at uh, 354, I think, these corn made, and that was lower than August. And now we're above that, not by much. But um, so that compares September to uh, 19 and 93. Going forward, however, what I'm thinking about, Larry, is uh, what could potentially happen once harvest gets underway. And mind you, harvest this year is delayed. They mm. are harvesting corn down down in the uh, uh, Oklahoma, Texas area, of course. Mm. But uh, we're behind average and will continue to be so just because the late planted corn this year uh, will take longer to mature. And uh, so it'll be October, November when we start to see harvest results. And thinking back to 93, price exploded the last 90 days of the year, and the price exploded as each and every week uh, the trade got further information out of harvest activity as reported Mondays at 3 o'clock by the USDA saying, oh, goodness. The harvest results are less than we had hoped for, and the crop size is smaller, hence price rises. So that was what happened in 93, and I'm fully prepared to try to capitalize on a corn rally if something similar happens between now and Christmas. Well, the three things that come off my head right off the bat would be rain, one, two, cold weather, and three, any tweet from Washington, and four, a possibility of a trade agreement with China, which would release uh, a lot of buying, possibly, to agriculture. But, you know, I'm not a fundamentalist. I don't know diddly squat about it, John. I look at the chart. If there's a chart there that tells me it's getting ready to go higher, you know, then I would certainly, uh, and I'm, I happen to be long corn right now, and uh, I would, uh, that's all I would be saying there. But I, th I think you're right about 93. All the factors are certainly there to make it do exactly that. So I'll be focusing on that. And thanks for bringing it to our attention. The work that you do here at the DEN is uh, incomparable, and we certainly appreciate, appreciate it. Everybody in the DEN knows what you do. But this was really great uh, stuff, information, John. So thank you so much, John Chevney. My pleasure, Larry. Bye. You bet, buddy. We'll be right back. Pay a few bills. 877-927-6648. If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, TAS understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the TAS Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today, and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. 
Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call, call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Okay, folks, I've been asked to uh, talk a little bit about that uh, artificial intelligence program that we've been working on, the neural network. I posted the chart of gold, and as you can see, the market was due to go higher and then have a uh, substantial move to the downside. Um, it's based on time, folks. It has nothing to do with price. That little red line that you see there is a time vibration line. It has nothing at all to do with price. It just means that that is the time where the market should start to go up or down. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, but it works more than it doesn't. Now, I'd like to show you what happened over the, uh, the preceding uh, few hours. Uh, it bottomed just a little while ago here, about 20, 20 minutes ago, and we should start higher for the next few weeks, <laughs> the next few uh, hours in gold if it's still okay. If we get below 1504, it's certainly wrong, but uh, the key time today is at 1030 which is a half hour after this show is over. Watch the price of gold, because if it's holding at a pretty good level and starts to move higher, it would have a pretty good probability of moving higher. But again, we don't know, and of course nobody else does either, if it's going to work or not. It has a probability of better than 75% when it works. And when it works, it really works. And when it doesn't work, it doesn't work. Now let's talk about something that's really important. I'm going to post a chart here of the Chicago Mercantile exchange. You're going to have to do the work yourself because I'm not going to tell you. But here is the daily equity volume and open interest for the E-mini, S&P, NASDAQ, Dow Jones, and the Russell. And I want you to go and check it for yourself to see how open interest did with the market going up into new high ground on very, very subpar volume. And here we are 10 points away from an all-time high at, at almost at war with with the uh, the uh, with the run over this drone that was dropped, it reminds me so much of where we were in August of 1991. But what do I know? I'm going to run through this one more time to try to, you know, I believe me, folks. Now I'm I'm not a I'm not a fundamentalist. You guys know that. Those of you that are listening for the first time, I do not look at fundamentals. I don't look at fundamentals. I look at bar charts, look at cycles and things like that. That's all numbers is what I'm trying to look at. Here's the big picture as we see it here 
And this is going back. Remember, this is what I, I'm looking at, a big picture. I want to get this up here. This will be the last time you see this one, folks, unless you belong to the 24-7 uh, newsletter, which I'm going to expand on it. But you'll notice in 2000, we had a three drive to a top pattern. See that red arrow right there? If you look at 2007, we had a three drive to a top pattern. And look where we have now a three drive to a top pattern. Now, this one's a little different. And the reason why this one's a little different is because because it is what we say in the technical trade, it is absolutely perfect. Now, that doesn't mean it's going to work, but it just says that it's absolutely perfect. One, three, and five are perfect in time and price. Two and three are perfect. Four and five are perfect. Four and five is 1.6 rela uh, relationship of two to three. It's also 382 of the one, two. I mean, everything. And this says that uh, there is no time left. And we could, we could make the high today. We could make even a higher high on Monday into the equinox, um, you know, with some... Uh, a tweet or anything like that, but even if it pops up there, it's going to be really interesting to see if technical analysis uh, works this time because so many things are lined up. But to be this close to a new high, possibly on the brink of at least a skirmish is, is really amazing, but uh, that's the main thing. Now, let's go back and talk just a little bit about the open interest situation, folks. Do you remember a bull go back about three weeks ago? Every day on this show, I would tell you that the notes and bonds were screaming, please sell me, please sell me, please sell me, because open interest was not increasing. Over the past five trading days in the, the indices, we've seen increases in open interest. But yet, yesterday, with the market making new highs, there was a decrease in every single um, stock index. I mean, every single one with the market making a new high. Folks, the buyers have gone on vacation. Now, maybe they come back from vacation today and blow this out of the water, but that's my first little red flag up there if you're a technician. You know, if you believe in whether open interest works or not, and that's the sum total of all the buyers and sellers. So let's take a look at it. We've got Stan Harley will rescue me here in about three minutes. We had a couple questions here. Uh, one of them was about uh, uh, Bitcoin. I wanted to bring this up so you folks can uh, take a quick look at it here. You'll see what it's done here uh, overnight. Had that little bit of a uh, bump up when gold had a nice little run. Folks, uh, gold and silver, uh, they're selling, they sold off about $7 from the high last night. But overall, if you take a really close look at that gold and silver chart, pay very close attention to it, folks, because the low we made down there at 1492 in the Christmas gold is very, very important. And the reason why is you took out the lows of the last uh, five or six trading days and didn't go anywhere. And and you'll never guess what that price level was on a ratio basis. Well, since you're not going to guess, I'm not going to tell you. But it starts with a three, has an eight in the middle, and a two on the end. Anyway, let's keep an eye on that because it's very important. Any move above 1520 in the gold would tell me that we are heading up to take out that old high at 1565. Another reason to believe that is on the way down, silver stopped within one half cent of the weekly gap that it left three weeks ago at 17. 46. The low that we had yes this past week was 1746 and a half. A half a cent gap still sitting there on the silver chart. So pay attention. I think these numbers mean something, you know, overall. So let's kind of watch out. Now, another thing that I wanted to talk just briefly about was what happened to me over in uh, in London. I mean, I, I, I listened to a program that was an, uh, I, I traded Monday through Friday with my friend. I was Saturday, we started, excuse me, Sunday, we started. But some of the things that we talked about, I'm just going to show you a couple of them here, uh, just to give you an idea. This starts out with the uh, the Freemasons and, you know, all that kind of stuff and, you know, what whatever that stuff means. I, you know, it, it, it's, it's really interesting, probably not too interesting to most people. But another thing that you want to remember here is that in our, in our wonderful country where we live in, we've had 45 presidents. And if you take a look up here, you can see here that 14 of them we're Freemasons, so uh, there's a lot of stuff here. But we went through all things with, uh, you know, the Rose, uh, 
the Rose, <laughs> the Rosalind Chapel, and uh, all the stuff with the Rothschilds, and it was just really spectacular stuff. Uh, I wish I had the time and and I had the and the ability to do it all, but of course uh, I I really haven't been able to do that. We uh, we went through everything. I mean, it was just really amazing. It was an hour and a half each one of them, four hours. And if you want to see something, if you really uh, really like to uh, look at things in history and stuff, if you'll take a look at this chart here that we have of the, hold on one second, of her holy mother, the queen here, if I can just get the thing to work, hold on just a second. I I'm think I'm, oh, I'm having a rough time. Just give me a second to get this thing beeping here. There we go. Get this up here. You can see here uh, on the left, you'll see the Knights Templar there, and you'll notice that his cross, and you take a look at the Queen Mother, and it is the exact same thing, and that goes back to a whole lot of things that uh, people, you know, talk about when they're dealing in some of those things. But it was very, very exciting to do this, and hopefully someday I'll be able to share little bits and pieces of it. So we're going to take a little break here, and we got a real break. we got Stan the Man Harley, the Harley Stock Market. Market letter coming on. We'll be right back. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of tfnn.com under Trading Newsletters. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, we're back, folks, and I believe we're talking with Stan Harley out of Phoenix, Arizona. Stan, how are you doing this morning, my friend? Good morning, my friend Larry. Just doing awesome. Thank you. 
Listen, before we start with the uh, the stock market, we've had a request from someone. Uh, he's re he's reminded me three times. So could you give your rough idea of what you're looking at, gold, both short term and long, long term? Could you do that for us? I I think the metals have probably seen a high, uh, okay. Larry. Uh, we tend to, uh, going back over many, many years, I found that uh, there's a cycle that averages about 90, 98, 94, 95, 96 months, roughly eight years, right in there. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're right in zone uh, for that cycle to next recur. It last occurred in August, September 2011. Well, you had eight years, and well, you're you are where we are right now. So yeah, I, I think sure. there's a very good possibility that cycle has made its mark again, and uh, we've mm -hmm. seen a high, and we're going to start stair-stepping our way down. Metals okay. uh, have a tendency to make spike tops, rounded bottoms, just the opposite of what the stock market does. Stock market typically makes spike bottoms and rounded tops, but uh, long and the short of it is, Larry, I think the metals have probably seen a high, and we're going to start stair-stepping lower. Okay, that's uh, fair enough. That's what he uh, was asking for, and I think that uh, that should answer it. I think pretty good. Now, Stan, we're having some very low volume up in here. Do you ha do you have any comments about that? I mean, here we have what quadruple witching hour today, and we're we're what eight points away from a new high in the S and P. We're on the brink of war with Iran. My SEAL team unit is on alert. So, what's going to happen, buddy? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I I can relate. I'm an ex Navy. Man, um, <laughs> well, I, I shouldn't joke about that. I was at a poker game once up in Scott, uh, up there in your area at Scottsdale. I was playing in a tournament, and I was making a joke that I was a Navy SEAL. And the guy across the table says, "You shouldn't joke about that." And he he lifted up his tattoo, and it said, "My business is killing." And on his other side of his arm, it said, "Business is good." He was a Navy SEAL. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I remember that uh, too vividly. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Haven't well. done it since, except for just now. Shut up. Go ahead, Stan. Go ahead. That's, that's too funny. Um, Larry, when we when we knew I spoke a few weeks ago, I said then I thought uh, the market would uh, was probably going to trend sideways and uh, and make a low in uh, in October. Uh, I've uh, backed off from that. I'm thinking uh, the low that I was looking for, the October low, probably occurred in August. Uh, okay. We are right here on the verge of making new highs. Uh, I am a little bit bothered, as, as you addressed uh, about 15, 20 minutes ago, by the low volume. Uh, mm -hmm. I think uh, the low we saw a couple of days ago, uh, coincident with the Fed Med meeting, uh, marked a, a short-term cycle low. But I would really like to see us put on a head of steam here and rocket in a new high territory, and that's just not happening. Mm -hmm. So that that's a little problematic for me. Uh, I, I'm, I'm in the camp right now that I'm bullish. I'm in the camp that says we are going to go to a new high, but I'll, I'll caveat that with uh, there's a possibility we could stall here and mm -hmm. uh, maybe drift back lower into uh, into mid-October. I'm just not yeah. real sure at the moment, but uh, when, yeah. if you hold my feet to the fire, I'm, I'm more in the bullish camp than, than I am anything bearish. Well, you've just uh, aligned yourself with the not sure camp, which about 99% of us are in that camp. So you're in good company, my friend. We're only we're only one tweet away from a 300 point up move or a 300 point down move, is the way it looks. <laughs> but anyway, that's the neither here nor there. Um, what about uh, your Fibonacci timing? You know, you had a low that was uh, you said in October, but you think that shortened up uh, into August? Um, I. I'm not sure of that. Uh, there's a, the, this, as we talked about last time, uh, I've got a cycle going back, gosh, five, six, seven years. It's come in pretty regularly about every 96, 97 trading days. Mm -hmm. And that was due to uh, recur again in mid-October. Uh, mid mm -hmm. And I was pretty confident uh, a couple of months ago that that was going to next make its mark. Uh, mm -hmm. But Cycles, Larry, they contract, they expand. They're not always a fixed speed oscillator. And mm -hmm. uh, usually when I go on the air and make hay of something and say, okay, this cycle is due once mm -hmm. again in this time frame, the cycle gods above look down and they go, ah, uh, 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 Stan, we're going to catch you on this one. We're going to make you uh, look, look foolish here. So maybe that's what's happening, Larry. <laughs> Stan, I go through that every single day. <laughs> Five days a week.
<laughs> do you have a problem with those guys too? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they do. Uh, so, oh, you think something's going to happen? Well, let me show you what's really going to happen. You know, yeah. so that's, that's as soon as you put it out on the air and let uh, everybody know, boy, the cycle guys, they're up there wringing their hands and they just can't wait to, you know, make, make us uh, look a little foolish here down here on earth. <laughs> that's for sure. Uh, Stan, um, let me ask you a question about the, the, the world indices. You know, you do some work there. You just don't just do the U.S. market. You look at the world. Is there anything that you see on the international front that's either a red flag or a black and white checkered flag? Do you see anything at all that, uh, that looks really exciting? Yeah. Well, well, that's a, a, that's a good question to, uh, to raise. Um, a couple of points. Uh, the European indices are laggards compared to their American counterparts. But uh, then I look at uh, the Toronto index, all-time high right now. Look at Australia, it's on the verge of an all-time high. So uh, there's a little bit of both, depending on what position one wants to make, like a Democrat or Republican. Um, <laughs> one can make the case either way. Um, again, I think uh, I think still think we're in a in a long-term bull market. Uh, whether we bust out the new highs here imminently or we stall off for a couple, we stall and and then and drift lower before making new highs for for a few more weeks. I'm I'm struggling here to make the case either way. Uh, again, I'm I'm uh, I'm on the side the bullish camp right now that says we do bust out the new highs, but uh, I'm watching these things uh, very carefully. I will also point out, I sent you a chart. Uh, right before uh, we came on the air of the New York Composite. Um, I'm looking at the GAN rule of four pattern, and we've got uh, three attempts to uh, break through overhead resistance. We're making the fourth one right now. Whether we break out uh, here in the next day or two, or we, we stall and we do that later in October, as I said, is a little uncertain to me, but eventually we are gonna punch through on the upside, and I think we'll break through with, uh, with a vengeance. Uh -huh. Uh, the GAN rule I'm, four pattern, uh, yeah, it, when, when, when we break through, we usually sprint quite rapidly to the upside. Uh, that, that is really a really classical example of it, too, isn't it? Gosh, it just really lines up pretty good. Stan, uh, one, someone just uh, just tweeted me, not tweeted me, but they went into the room and asked a question. Uh, th those averages that you have there uh, on the chart, green, blue, and red, do you want to tell the folks uh, what you're, what those are and how you use them? Well, they're right there. There's a 50-day moving average, the 20-day moving average, and the 18-day moving Is that correct? That, that is correct. There, there you just put my uh, chart up of the New York Composite, I see. Yes, um, yes. Let, let's address that for a second. You can see the, uh, the high back uh, in January of a year ago. Um, that was what I've got labeled as point number one. Then point number two was the high in September of October of last year. Point three was the July high, and now we're, uh, we're making point four. And if you draw with a heavy felt tip pen with your eye, uh, horizontal line there, you, you can see those four points. And we're on the verge of breaking through. Good. Hey, Stan, thanks for joining us, my friend. And we'll have you on again soon. I really appreciate your time, my friend. So God bless. My pleasure, Larry. Thank you. You bet. Thank you. The Harley stock market letter, folks, always up there in the Timer Digest rankings. We'll be right back. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you're a trader in the market looking for exposure to gold or gold mining equities, then now is a perfect time to sign up for Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. The summer is over, gold is trading back above $1,500, and the 10-year treasury is hovering at around 1.5%. 
Tom O'Brien has been writing his weekly gold report for almost 18 years. There's no one that knows more about how the gold market trades and how gold mining equities react. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, Tom publishes his weekly gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. As of September 3rd, Gold Report subscribers have five active open positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 38% for each position. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up today by visiting TFNN.com. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Directions Daily S&P 500 Bull and Bear Leveraged ETFs. Direction Leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. The Bull Bear Binary Option Hour, next on TFNN. Okay, I've been asked to uh, update that uh, artificial intelligence thing on the gold. Uh, you'll see the low came in. Folks, remember that red line has nothing to do with price. It has to do with time, T-I-M-E. It's a vibration. It's not time. So watch 1030 in the morning. If it's pulling back at that point, uh, that might be a good spot to look at it because it tells you that the market should turn at that point. But maybe it will work, maybe it won't. Let's move on to something that is spot on time right now with all the good news coming out of Brexit. Looks like mini Trump over there. Uh, oh, just a minute, uh, Lorna, I'll be happy to do that for you. Uh, let's put this chart up of the British pound first. We want to talk about that. But the let me, I'm going to do this, folks, in the room. You just go to www.cme, Chicago Mercantile Exchange com. And then all you do is you hit data, and by golly, you're going to get the same chart that I had posted earlier. Just It's real simple, and uh, even I can do it. That's how I know it's simple. <laughs> but if you go to www.cme.com, click on data, it'll say volume and open interest. Just scroll down to find the one that you're looking for, and it'll tell you the net change in the open interest. Now, we got triple witching, so the open interest in the September is gone, and everybody's moving over to the Christmas, December. So that's uh, you know that, that shouldn't make any difference, but it's dropping. In other words, words, new people are not buying December. They're getting out of September, but they're not buying December. Supposedly, whether that means anything or not, I don't know, but I hope that helps. Take a look at this chart here, folks, on the British pound. If you remember down there, we had made new lows from where we were back in 2017 after Brexit. Uh, we were fortunate enough to look at the daily chart there. We had a really nice ABCD buying opportunity down there at that uh, 19, uh, was I think it was 1995. We hit 2550 today. Today, folks, that was the exact 382 retracement. You can see it there in light green, uh, where it goes back into the old resistance that it had back in June. Now, if you wanted to be real creative and do a little bit of work, like my friend over in the UK does, is to measure the move that we had. And this is a weekly chart from December of 2019 up to the high we made in March, and then compare that to where we are right now. And whoa and behold, you're never going to believe that the move that we're having now now is 61% of that move right there. So that's how those numbers line up. That's why people have a real difficulty understanding Fibonacci numbers and what they really mean. And I'm raising my hand because I only see bits and pieces of it. But uh, when you see that the relationship there between the, uh, the highs and lows of the market, it's just been uh, really, really, uh, uh, really quite amazing. Another market that is under extreme pressure and I think is going to 
break uh, a lot to the downside, folks, is the crude oil market. Uh, we've had a uh, let's just let's just bring up this chart for where we were here uh, last uh, last Monday. Well, it was actually Sunday night. You'll notice here that we had that move up to the 78 percent level at 63 and change. We're now trading below 59 and we're not going anywhere. We can't even bounce. I mean, that looks like that bun chart. I mean, it just is really, really a negative chart here. And, you know, stop and think, if you look at that chart on, on the weekly crude oil, that it made an ABCD pattern from June through August, right at the 78% level. It hadn't been for a drone hitting Saudi Arabia and uh, and, and I'm one of those people that uh, I'm skeptical whose drone it was probably. Anyway, let's uh, right now, you know, we're back into this zone here. We're trading back at those old highs at 58.50. So it's a very important spot here that we are in crude oil because any move below 58 is going to tell us that we're, we're heading down into that 53 to 54 range to see if it's going to hold that level. So the, the news has not made the crude oil move other than the one day. You know, that was a one day wonder and that didn't last very long. Actually, if you notice that day, it, it opened at 63.35, immediately broke, well, over a period of about four or five hours, it broke down to 59, rallied all the way back to test the high, then it went back below through that. Again, that's not good price action, folks, with bullish news. You have bullish news and the market doesn't react to it. The only way that market can go is going down. So we have to pay, you know, a little, little attention to that as we see. Remember, this is triple witching hour. So uh, triple witch, quadruple witching day. So uh, it's going to be uh, quite crazy, especially in the last uh, hour or so of the day uh, as some of these people do this. But Monday, we should be, uh, should be normal. Uh, we have that equinox coming in, and that, that'll be always interesting to see because the uh, the sun will be entering into Libra, and one of the things that I learned when I was in London is the importance of the zodiac and the importance of Plato, and it's just really incredible how you see how these things fit together, so we'll see uh, what's going on. Yes, uh, there's a uh, article that Mr. Z is talking about. It's in the news about a rogue oil trader who lost $320 million on a wrong-way derivatives. What was that guy's name from— uh, from the UK, the bar, uh, the Barings Bank. What was it? Nick Leeson. Nick Leeson. Remember, he lost a couple of billion dollars on the earthquake that they had uh, in Japan at that time. He was heavily, uh, you know, uh, short, uh, long, uh, short to market. Uh, it was a longer short. I don't remember. No. I don't mean whatever, whatever he did, he did it wrong. Anyway, he's a he's a rock star over there. They, he gets paid a lot of money for talking uh, over in the UK now. Even though he uh, he buried one of the oldest banks in Europe, uh, he's now uh, a rock star talking about what he did wrong. I guess I still have hope, folks. Shut the front door and raise the rent. We'll see what happens as we go through uh, looking at some of these things. Um, we'll we'll watch this as we look around. Remember, we had Bill uh, Bill Meridian. I'm going to bring this up as a post because I think you know we. We respect Bill's work. He's always out there. Uh, yes, it, uh, Ruby, it affects the futures, uh, the uh, stock indices. It doesn't affect the other commodities at all. No, it just it's just the uh, the stock indices is the only thing that it does because and the stocks, of course. But uh, that's it. Let's just take a look here that we got from Bill Meridian. He sent this out uh, Sunday to his folks. He said Monday is a pivot point. So far, that number has not been taken out yet. It's still early. Um, then he talks about the July 26th high that we did take that out by just a hair. Uh, the last 30 years, the index has been down 23 times out of 30 between the 16th and the 25th. So we got 23rd, 24th, and 25th to see what's going to happen. 1980, the index has fallen 67% of the time between the 16th and the 30th. So that increases the day out to the 30th. 1980, the index declined 70% of the time between the 20th and the 28th. And between the 17th has only been up 35% of the time. And uh, 17th was <laughs> uh, on Tuesday. And it was down just a shade, uh, but you know, didn't really didn't do very much. But anyway, that's those are the statistics that we're dealing with. These are the data dependency things that John uh, Jameson works on quite a bit, and we're going to have him as a guest next week to show you uh, some of the things, the exciting things that he really does, because it's stuff that uh, you know I don't see much new stuff. But these last uh, couple of uh, four or five weeks, I've seen nothing but new stuff, and uh, it's just really been exciting for me to see. I've been really blessed to be at 
my age doing what I'm doing, I feel like I just got out of college and the excitement of watching the stuff move around is just really, uh, really a lot of fun. So we'll, we'll hopefully keep this thing going for a little bit longer here at the offices of Duke and Duke. 100 South Broad Street, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Keep those cards and letters coming in. Unfortunately, you're not going to be able to get through to the phone lines today, folks. They're all just flashing green. And Al's just got his, he's pulling his hair out over there in St. Petersburg, Florida, trying to get them all answered. But we'll try to keep you on the flip-flop for Monday. We'll finish up the store here in just a minute and move on to the supermarket of commodities. 877-927-6648. Shut the front door and raise the rent. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get the competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, folks, I posted some charts here towards the end of the show that people ask me to post. One was the CME chart. Just go to www.cme.com. Click on data, click on the date that you want. You see there that it was Thursday, the 19th of uh, September, and it shows you what the open interest. The open interest is the sum total of all the buyers and sellers. When open interest goes up and prices uh, go up, that's very, very bullish. But if open interest drops and prices go up, that means that buyers are leaving the market. That's the situation that we're seeing now, at least for one day, in the uh, stock index futures as it made new highs on very low volume. But we'll see. 
we got triple witching or quadruple witching today so that's always and sometimes it doesn't do anything too but this equinox that we have coming in here on uh, Monday is going to be really exciting to look at uh, the other chart I posted of course the last one was silver you can see that it's had some higher bottoms it's certainly lagging gold by quite a bit but the fact that we have not uh, that low that we made down there you can see there that low on the 16th that was half a cent from the gap from uh, two weeks ago. That, that to me, is just mind-boggling that can do that. That means somebody was sitting there with a bushel basket of orders that uh, they couldn't get through, and you can see the market rallied, uh, you know, quite a bit. It rallied well over 50 cents uh, from that level. Well, 50 cents is not too much, but in some markets, uh, it certainly is. So uh, keep a close eye on that, so we'll see. And that's basically it. We're almost uh, to the end of the line here. Well, one other question someone's asking me about is the bonds, folks, the bonds. Uh, uh, the, the bonds are in big trouble. Uh, in fact, there's big trouble everywhere. The Fed has lost control, as far as I can see. Uh, I think this, uh, uh, my two cents worth, uh, as a chartist, uh, and, and as common sense, is that uh, this negative interest rate is, uh, reminds me of old Chuck Ponzi over there in Boston in the 1920s. It's nothing more than a Ponzi scheme. Bernard Madoff would be really easy to work that kind of deal, wouldn't he? Anyway, that doesn't make any sense, folks. Uh, if, any, if you find somebody that does it, please send them my way. I'm going to make them a good deal. I'm going to throw in a toaster and a microwave oven so we'll be able to see uh, what's going on. So that's pretty much it. And we'll see you on the flip-flop on the Equinox coming in on the 23rd of September at 9 a.m. May God bless.